Hello. Hey, Mary. Hey, Seth. So you really like Allie, right? I do. I, I identify with Allie. I just like the whole boy craziness. I totally get the sort of not thinking things through and like having, I don't know. I just, when I was a freshman in high school, I feel like I was very much like her <laughs> for good or ill. <laughs> See, the thing is that I really kind of find Allie super dislikable. <laughs> oh, man. But so what, like, what do you have against her? Well, I think there's just a little bit of a personality conflict thing there, but I think the thing that bugs me the most about her, and admittedly, at the end of the episode this week, she made progress on this issue, but I hate the way she blames everybody else for all the things that she does. Yeah. It's like it's, like it's Holly J's fault that Allie wrote a death threat about her on the internet. <laughs> And even like in the beginning, when when Johnny DeMarco like disavows their relationship and says, "No, I'm not. I won't go out with her," which was, you know, arguably wrong. Ali is the one who was who spilled the secret that they were supposed to be keeping. That's true. And and it suddenly became all about him when she did something wrong too. And it wasn't like she did it for good reasons either. She just did it because she wanted to save face with Holly J. I mean, I sympathize with her because the fact that they had a relationship that they had to hide was dumb anyway. Like, his whole thing about, like, but if people know, they'll insult us. It's like, deal with it, dude. But anyway. No, I totally agree with that. I think you're absolutely right. Like, if you need to keep a relationship secret, you shouldn't be in the relationship. Right. Um, because something's wrong there. But the thing, but that said, if you guys, if you two people agree, then you're not going to tell anybody. Yeah. You know, if you can't be trusted with that, you know, how can she be trusted with anything else? Either? And it was funny when she was like, you know, when uh, when Sav tells her the cops are coming or she has to go to the cops, and she's like, I can't believe this is happening to me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? exactly. But see, here's the thing. That's uh, uh, this is the problem that everybody, uh, like every high school and middle school and adult fight is about. It's like who started it? Because it's kind of like. Well, Holly J's been mean to everybody for a long time. Everybody's felt victimized by her. Like, I've never heard her say anything nice. Like, I get why people are angry. But then, I don't know, when people fight back and kind of gang up, it's like, obviously, anytime anybody's ganging up on people, it's like, you know you're wrong. You know, I feel like one of the things we've learned over the years is that the reason people lash out in the way that like Holly J is lashing out is because they're like wounded little babies inside. Like they, you know, they have pain right. in their lives. And like, it's like if people just understood that you could, you could like, like Claire was like, just ignore her. And it's like, that's really all you have to do. Just ignore it. Like whatever. Right. Yeah. I mean, revenge is very rarely justified. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and even so, I mean, I understand what Ali was doing and, you know, uh, it was just even to the point where, like, um, when she was in the police station and the cop says, you know, making death threats is an actual crime. And she's like, well, obviously that was a joke. And it's like, no, you need to understand yeah. that just because you think it's a joke doesn't mean that other people do. And that doesn't make it OK. Yeah. You know, it, here's, you know, oh, 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 I just thought of a great <laughs> example of why I. Uh, Ali is distasteful to me. Okay, okay. Remember, I'm sure you remember this. It was not that long ago. Miley Cyrus's picture with her friends yes, with this whole slant, I think. And she kept sort of fake apologizing for it, like yeah. saying things like, I'm sorry if people were offended and doing everything but actually saying, I'm sorry I did that. Yeah. That seems to be very much like something Ali would do. In fact, I don't even know Ali would get to the point of fake apologizing, but, yeah. you know, it's just not, it's sort of not getting that it's not – she sort of thinks it's other people's problem if they have a problem with what she does. That she doesn't think it's actually t due to anything that she's doing. Yeah. And it's kind of like she didn't get it until she saw Holly J crying in bed depressed. Be which I almost understand. Like, again, like, she's young. And I understand that she didn't – because the way Holly J is with people and the way she deflects criticism. And, like, when people would say stuff to her in the cafeteria and she would just be like, well, I don't care what you think. Like, I get mm – -hmm. If you're young and, like, don't quite understand yet that, like, that's a deflection, that that's – that she actually – like, that any time anybody hears an insult, it hurts them. Like, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. who it is. Like, they get right. hurt. Yeah, you know? seriously. I can't imagine what – I could not – I don't have the constitution to be able to handle that. No. But to end this on a sort of positive note for, for Allie, I feel like I see, I see great potential for Allie there. Yeah, the totally. And I hope that her and DeMarco get back together. Mm. Let <laughs> <laughs> I said the way we're going to break out. Oh, wait. I just realized oh. I was right. Hold on a second. Stop, wait. Stop everything wait. because I was right. <laughs> you were right for now. 
you have no <laughs> idea what's gonna happen next. Like this isn't over. This is just a complication in the in the flow of the river that is, you know, Ali and Johnny's love. <laughs> the like. flow of the river. <laughs> All right. I'm confident. Okay. All right, let's call Melinda Shankar because we never have. Let's do it. Totally. Hello. Hi, is this Melinda Shankar? Yes, it is. How are you? I'm good. It's Mary and Seth from the end.com. How's Hi. it going? It's going good. How's it going up there? I'm good. I'm in Ottawa. I have a week off shooting, so I'm uh, relaxing at home, seeing all my buddies and staff. It's nice. How far is Ottawa from Toronto? We were wondering that. Uh, at speed limit or uh, the way my dad drives. <laughs> it's, about, uh, <laughs> it's about four and a half to five, depending on how many times I go to McDonald's. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, so how often do you have to go back and forth? Well, I'm like perma Toronto now. Like I, I even have a 416 number. It's great. Uh, <laughs> but I would say um, every chance I get, uh, probably every long weekend, so about two or three times a month, I'd like to get back home. Oh, okay. I see. So it's like you mostly live in Toronto and then just kind of you want to get back home as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, whenever we get breaks. But I shoot every day, so oh, wow. it's hard to get that time. <laughs> Man, what else are you working on right now? Because I, I heard that you're like shooting something else next week. Yes, um, it's a new show for YTV called How to Be Indie. Uh, it's a it's a kids show, and I'm I'm indie in the show, so it's about me, you know, indie for independence. So she doesn't listen to her parents or her friends, and it gets her in trouble. So that's usually what the episode's about. And stuff, so. <laughs> now wait, is this like are you being typecast? Is this? Uh... <laughs> I know, isn't that crazy? It's a, it's like alley, but for kids <laughs> <laughs> is that kind of like how you are in real life or no i don't want to think of myself as a stubborn hard-headed kid <laughs> although you know what now that you said that my mom does call me hard-headed oh, <laughs> so wait so like what what do and don't you have in common with Allie? she's actually i have to tell you she's like one of my favorite characters is she yeah, oh I thank you so much <laughs> so much oh okay so i i'm not i don't think i'm boy crazy but she's She's you know, pretty boy crazy. Even um, I was asking kind of the characteristics of Allie just to kind of, you know, get a sense of who she is. And the first thing they said was boy crazy. <laughs> but my, her parents are pretty strict. I mean, my parents are from South America. So, you know, they speak English as their first language and the fashions are kind of the same and all that stuff. So I don't really have the whole hiding my true self from my parents type deal. So right, right. I think that's where we, we're different. But <laughs> yeah. And that's probably why you're not boy crazy in real life is because it hasn't been like, you know, you haven't had to stifle it in front of your parents. Yeah, I don't have to hide it or anything. Yeah, I'm totally. not. But it's not hard for you to like act like a boy crazy girl. Cause <laughs> no, I can do it. <laughs> I hope I'm doing it. <laughs> I that's one of the reasons Allie's my favorite is because I was like a little bit, especially grade nine, like I was a little bit Allie-ish. Yeah, yeah pretty <laughs> There's <much>. always those. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then like you and Sav playing brother and sister, I I love like the chemistry you guys have with brother and sister. Like the scene where um he's like practicing telling his dad about him and Anya, <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, I loved that so much. But uh, today. Like, when you auditioned, did they have you meet him and, like, make sure that you guys, like, kind of seemed like brother and sister or what? Not at all, but when I saw him, I was like, wow, we actually look a lot alike. Like, we, we could pass as brother and sister. Yeah, totally. Um, and we get along so well, like, on and off set. We always hang out and stuff. Um, to be, like, completely honest, I was the biggest Degrassi fan all my life. No way. I have two older sisters, so they watched, like, Degrassi the you know, the old school junior high stuff. So awesome. <laughs> it's like one of my favorites and everyone. So I didn't even put two and two together that I'd be playing his sister until like the meet and greet when I met all the cast. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be working with him a lot. Oh, my <laughs> God. I think I'm such a nerd for saying this when he listens to this. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is so cool. So wait, did that yeah. make you like a lot more nervous for the audition? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> just, like, because where we audition is the actual school of Degrassi, so you get to see the thing. So just driving up to it and, like, seeing the school. Oh, my God. Me and my dad were, like, creepers, and we, like, took the pictures and stuff of, like, the school, and we went in, and we were, like, extra excited and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so we drew So uh, we drove five hours for, like, the two-minute audition, but it, like, made my life. And I even told him in the audition room, I was like, this audition makes my life. And oh. you're not <laughs> used to say things like that, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what was your first day at work like then when you showed up and, and met everybody that worked on the show? I mean, that must have been crazy. It was so crazy. I thought it was going to be a lot 
scarier than it was because, I don't know, I looked up to these guys, you know, like I watched the show, so I thought they were going to be all like, you know, super stuck up and like, you know, pros and, oh, you don't know what you're doing. So yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like that. Um, But I went, like, there was other new characters, like there was the eight of us, so I didn't feel like the complete newbie. I don't, I think it would have been a lot worse personally if I was like the only new person of like the season or something yeah yeah right. so um they were all so sweet I remember my my first scene was in the cafeteria the one where um I forget what it was that I was in the cast <laughs> um and I remember just being so scared and then everyone was like are you okay you're you know can we get you some water and like even the cast they were so sweet oh so ever since then it was like such a bonding experience that is so awesome um did you oh you know what I was wondering do you guys ever debate about the topics in the scripts? Like, so, like, this episode with, you know, what happens with Allie and Holly J. Um, yeah. I, like, myself, just watching it, I was kind of, like, going back and forth about, like, how I felt about all of it. Like, do you guys ever, like, kind of argue with each other about, like, what should or shouldn't have happened? Um, Very much so. Like, we have the cold reads for the, the read-throughs of the script. And after we read them, we, we discuss with Linda Schuyler and the writers, you know, if there's stuff we'd liked or if we didn't like and, you know, maybe a line change or so. Um, from a grade nine point of view, I totally see it. Because yeah. <laughs> I remember being in grade nine. That stuff happened all the time. And I love Degrassi for the fact that they cover real topics. You know, like it doesn't seem like it'd be a huge deal for, you know, okay, cyberbullying, although it is a big deal, not a lot of shows would do an entire episode on it. Mm -hmm. So I was really happy that they did it and that I could be a part of it to show, you know, kids that it's not cool. But um, it it was good. I um, It hopefully helped a lot of kids to say, you know, it's not cool. It's bad from both ends. You know, the person who's being bullied and the person who's bullying, so... I guess that's the thing. It's like the, it's like at the end of the movie Mean Girls, where it's kind of like you realize, like, just because you're doing it back to somebody, like, just because they quote unquote started it, like, doesn't mean that you're not being like really cruel and like really hurting somebody's feelings. So, but what's what is like social networking like for you in real life now, though? Because now that you know you're a recognizable face and name, does that has that like changed what you've had to do online on <laughs> Facebook or anything else? Uh, for sure, there's definitely the um, the limited profile going on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's really weird. Like I don't because I'm new to Toronto. Like I don't really get to go to school because I work every day. I have onset tutoring, so um, the days that I do get to go to school and I meet new people, um, I kind of want them to find me on Facebook with the people I do know. So I can't completely be like unlisted, and I don't really know everyone's names yet. So it's easier for them to learn one name than for me to learn like a thousand names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. um. Um, I can't really be completely not listed, but I get a lot of, um, you know, mail and all that, you know, little messages and stuff. My favorite ones are the ones uh, where it's like, I'm in your boat. Like, I feel I feel for Allie because that's my situation. And it's nice to know that I don't, I'm not the only one. I love those ones because it's good that I'm helping out. Aww. And I'm not like a useless character or anything that's, you know, just there. Um, <laughs> but um, the ones I find are really, like, I laugh and I show my parents. I'm like, do you know these people? The ones who make up family trees. It's so great. <laughs> like, I'm your uncle's brother's cousin's son's kid, and we're best friends. We played when we were little. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I tell my dad, and my dad's like, I don't know these people. They're from <laughs> Texas. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. I wonder if they, like, really believe that or if they're just trying to, like, trick you or what. It's so weird. I don't know, because my parents are like, I don't know these people, so. <laughs> but they're funny to read. I like them. Keep them coming. <laughs> Um, we heard or read that you, well, first of all, last year, or last year, last week, AJ Soudan told us that you were a black belt in karate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my whole family, like my dad in Ottawa, we own a martial arts school. That's what he does. So my entire family is black belt. So, um, wow. that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the burglar who breaks into your house. <laughs> that's what they all say. <laughs> We're all really tiny, so people don't. They don't think of anything until you, you know, you see me in the ring. <laughs> did, did you have, we were asking AJ about this and asking if like he was, you know, I, I said that I would be scared too of knowing the person that I had to sort of stage push was a black belt. And did you like, did you have, come on, you can tell us, did you like have to hold back from just kind of, you know, ripping him in half? Uh, no, AJ was like, he was my little buddy. I love the kid. Um, they wanted to get a stunt double for it. I've been beat up and pushed my entire life because of karate, so <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I can do it. It's fine. They're like, are you serious? Because it's pretty, like, he actually had to push me to make it look real. Like, 
Mm-hmm. It, it had to be completely full force. Yeah. But it didn't. I was used to it. So oh my God. <laughs> he, he was like, oh, my God, every take, he was like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, don't worry about Aww. it. <laughs> That was sweet. <laughs> that is so awesome. Um, so, like, what do you do for fun? What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, you're going to think I'm a big nerd. But um, Backstreet Boys, uh, forever and ever. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> they are my number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've morphed every single person on Degrassi into being a Backstreet Boy fan. Whether they want to admit it or not, they like it. <laughs> Are you telling me that Scott Patterson listens to the Backstreet Boys? Oh my God, Scott Patterson and me, we have our own dance to Backstreet Boys. That is right. He will also kill me for letting you know that, but it's true. <gasps> oh my God, I would pay so much money to see that. <laughs> okay, I will videotape it and somehow get it to you. Oh my God. All right. Next, like next time they're doing some kind of behind the scenes thing, just like just bust it out. Just be like. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say it. <laughs> we definitely will. <laughs> awesome. Actually, be- the, when they're interviewing someone else in a behind-the-scenes thing, you you guys just, like, sort of get in the background and start doing it. That's, yeah, that's exactly. Cool. Okay. And, uh, like, who else? Do you hang out with Scott Patterson, like, outside of work? Oh, my there? gosh. He is um, he's the first Degrassi kid ever, ever to ask me to hang out Aww. when I first moved. And I didn't even know how to use the subways or anything. He is the biggest gentleman ever. He took me around the entire Toronto showing me how to use the subways and all the buses. And he it's because of him that I'm the Toronto pro that I am. Oh <laughs> and, yeah, I think at least every week, at least one time a week, there's a big Degrassi hangout. Yeah. Because I moved and, like, I didn't have a school there, like, my only friends. <laughs> so when we're all hanging out together and people see us, they're like, you guys actually hang out together. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Yeah, we're Wait, nerds, like, but it's cool. <laughs> how many people are involved in a Degrassi hangout? Because the cast is like two dozen yeah, people yeah. or something. Exactly how you're picturing it right now. Oh, that's exactly how it is. Oh so what do you guys do? Do you, you like go play going. skee-ball and stuff? Or what's going on on a Degrassi hangout? Are you? I kind of make them go to the mall a lot because <laughs> I like to shop. Um, we go to the movies. We do events and stuff. We, we go out to dinner. We do... Whatever there is to do, we'll find it. <laughs> we'll do it. Oh my God. You have yeah. no idea what it would be like if you guys were in New York City and like the entire <laughs> cast of Degrassi walks in to go see some movie. I mean, it would just. I have heard. A, a ride <laughs> I have a lot of family in the states, and uh, they said that Degrassi in the states is a lot more appreciated and a lot bigger than it is in Canada. Mm-hmm. So uh, my cousin, she's about eleven or something, and she's from the states. So she, you know, I have to let. Send a couple autographs every month for her friends, and they go crazy. And I'm like, Aww. really? You want my autograph? <laughs> <Are> you serious? <laughs> but yeah, it's cute. <laughs> have you have you been down to the U.S. like since you started on it? Um, just for a little shopping right across the border, so nothing really. But okay. um, I'm g- probably going down in the summertime, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Definitely, like, come through New York and come by the offices, and we would love to shake your hand and tell you how rad you awesome. are. Awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us, Melinda. Yeah, no problem. You said people call you Mindy? Mindy, yes. Okay. That's been the preferred name since right. birth. <laughs> well, then I'm just going to be like, all right, see you, Mindy. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> all right. All right. Have a good Bye, guys. See you. Bye. I'm really glad you asked her that about her nickname. I didn't know that she was called Mindy because I am, when I was growing up, I had a dog for a long time named Mindy. And so I'm just sort of like automatically endeared to anybody named Mindy. (laughs) I hope she takes that as a compliment, dude. No, yeah, I know. I guess there are some people who would be offended by that. But no, I mean it in the best way possible. I just mean like anyone, when I meet people named Mindy, it just makes me feel good about them. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I caught like I guess I, I guess I didn't need to admit that to everybody that's <laughs> listening right now, but no. Well. <laughs> it's all uh it is just like a sunny, happy little name. All right. Let's call it a, a day. Let's call it a podcast. Way to podcast, Mary. Way to podcast, Seth. <laughs> Talk to you next week. All right, bye.